If you enjoy this content that I'm making, could you just consider subscribing to my channel? This shows that what I do is something that you enjoy. And this helps me a lot more than you think. Alright, hello and welcome Kilmar Collectors. Thank you for joining, my friend. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. This is exciting. Yeah, what's up? Uh, not ma much, man. Just getting back from the uh, the big July 4th holiday and trying to uh, get back in the swing of things. I've seen your videos, and how would you say that you differentiate yourself from other content creators? <laughs> um, yeah, man. I mean, it's... I definitely have a little bit different style, I think. Um, you know, when I kind of started YouTube and started going through a lot of the um, different videos and content that was out there, the thing that struck me was really just that I felt a little disconnected from a lot of other, uh, you know, just content in general, not just in, in EVE, but in, in general um, and I have a background in, in kind of hobbies in photography and videography. Um, and as a, a trainer and a teacher and, and, and a couple of other things in real life. And so it was kind of a natural, um, niche, if you will, to be able to take some of that and make it a little bit more personal, have a little bit of fun. Um, I love doing kind of some different sketches and, and kind of comedy stuff in addition to actually, uh, you know, being entertaining, I guess, you know, or, or being educational. So it's it's really just been kind of a fun journey for me to be able to to figure out how best to uh, give, you know, the viewers and kind of everybody that's, that's subscribed something a little bit different, but uh, familiar enough that hopefully they can still get some good content out of it. Oh, yes. Um, funny that you said that because I have a question that says, like, you got a crazy good webcam. <laughs> I'm telling you, the image <laughs> is amazing. And uh, yeah, is is that like, I don't know much about that. I have a webcam. I don't even know what it is. It's, it's a Logitech something something. But it's like, I don't look <laughs> even nearly as good. Well, I, I wouldn't feel too bad about that. I, I'm actually uh, filming on my Canon EOS RP with a f2.8 18 to 35 millimeter lens. Um, so that rig is probably around, probably around two grand. Um, so I would, I would not feel too bad if, uh, if your image isn't quite, uh, quite at that point. <laughs> it's not even nearly, I mean, it's good, yeah. but it's not that good. That's, that's what I saw. Like the first video I saw with you, I was like, dude, this, the, this image is like uh, breathtaking. You know, it's actually very, very good. I think a lot. Of I appreciate are, that. Yes, I yes. appreciate that. Well, and I'll tell you, man, it's um, it's something that's it's important. Your gear and and all of this, and and I know this is not the focus of this talk, so I won't spend much time on it here. But honestly, more important than the actual webcam um, for anybody, not just you or anybody else getting into uh, this. Really, the lighting is what will set you apart more than anything else. And so, you know, I, I tell people, and I, 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 like I said earlier, I've got a, a background in photography and videography. Um, but even just setting up some um, some good lighting uh, can make a world of difference. Um, I've actually got a webcam that I use for work that's on my computer that I I kind of tweak as well, and just adding some lights and, you know, 50 bucks off Amazon or something like that, you can actually get a pretty good image. So we'll, uh, we'll have to chat after this. Uh, and I can give you some tips as well, if you're interested. Oh, that would be great. That would be very good. Um, okay. So you became a content creator for echoes just a month ago. I saw that video. I saw the, the platter, like the plate you got. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like how did that change your video making? Um, it's given me more flexibility, I would say. Um, you know, I've been making videos for about six months now and up until this point, I'm, I'm a little bit handcuffed by what I can actually afford on the real test server. Um, you know, my own tech level and of course when I can find other, uh, people to fight or to demonstrate things. Right. And so being able to, to demonstrate things, to test things out, to actually put out videos, um, based off of things on the test server has been, like I said, it's just given me a lot of flexibility. Um, that being said, I will 
be the first one to tell you that I, while I, I enjoy that flexibility, I also feel like I have to be very careful because it's very easy to just do something on the test server and not think about the broader uh, consequences in a lot of ways. Because if I'm, for example, if I'm trying to build a, a PVE ship um, on the test server and I say, oh, this is great, and I go in and I start doing it um, on the real server, I might be actually doing myself a disservice because I might be riding with other people or I might be using a bubble that I don't use in, on the test server or I might you know, have to be worried about reds coming in or, or different things like that. And so you have to be very careful with understanding the difference between the safe environment and the risk-free environment of the test server and then taking some of that knowledge and actually putting it into kind of the, the real world and the real uh, live fire, if you will, um, that everybody actually plays in. I do agree to that. Um, the test server is, is one thing. And um, I, I actually got the question to be a content creator um, two days ago now. Uh, oh, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, but but I, uh, I declined it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, really. I, um, there were some benefits, as you say, for the, for the server and testing different stuff, but um, not really now. So yeah. um, we'll see. We'll see what I do. I heard that there yeah. is some uh, collaborations with um, content creators on that server, and that would be fun to join and do but yeah we'll see we'll see yeah i haven't had a chance to do too much of that yet i'm hoping that i can just with summer and everything else it's been crazy busy i i joke around with my wife that i think now that i'm making videos for youtube i'm actually playing less uh just because you know all the editing and i mean you know is going into this type of stuff right so it's kind of funny i i have to be careful to, to make sure that i i set time aside to make videos and kind of quote unquote work um, on the test server or do whatever I'm going to do and then actually still have uh, have some fun on the live server. So I, I definitely feel you. There's a lot of opportunity, but you have to be very careful about how you're going to uh, to spend your time. Just like you say, like you don't have as much time to play right now. And if you're going to use that time on the test server, you're really not in the game. So, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, um, I, I kind of feel the same. I started making, you know, like YouTube videos from games and stuff, but I quickly felt like I, I, I noticed that people really like this podcast things. And, and personally, I, I think they're very, they're very exciting to, to like hear other people's stories about Eve and, uh, like in general, any game, but, um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I'm, I'm basically just sitting here making up questions and uh, <laughs> that's pretty much what i do nowadays but i really like it i do i do have eve very close to me but yeah okay so uh, let's talk about eve you started very early in eve uh i did so i'm actually i'm probably a little bit different than most of the other content creators in that i actually did not play eve online and so i come to this with a pretty much greenfield z level zero knowledge base. Um, but what happened is during the pandemic, I we were living, uh, we were actually living with some friends because another story for another time, but we, uh, we had planned to travel the world. My wife, my now wife and I um, had planned to travel the world and uh, take basically a year off to go travel. And we started our travels in February of 2020 and then um you know pandemic hit in march and so we were uh we were in between houses and all this other stuff and so we were living with some friends and i didn't have my um like my xbox and you know uh, any of that stuff that i normally would and so i was playing a lot of mobile games and i'd always wanted to play eve um, but i just never had a uh a computer that was really up to the the task um, just because of my job and some other stuff I was always traveling and um, so when I saw that echoes came out I probably jumped on I think I was a little bit late to the party I think I might have been like a, a week after it, it launched or something like that but I I jumped in full uh, full force um, and have been just 
watching and learning. Um, we've got a ton of awesome folks in our alliance that are veterans and can kind of talk through stuff and, and help understand. But I think that's also part of my appeal as a content creator is that I am approaching this from somebody who's who doesn't know any better, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Um, you know, I can I can kind of um, go back to the 101 stuff that a lot of other people have known for years and and try to put my own spin on that and and give people a sense of what that might look like. Um, and, you know, I played for about four or five months. Um, and then, like I said, I started the channel back in, um, back in January, um, really as kind of a, a way to just get even more out of the game because I was enjoying it. And, uh, I think apparently it, it resonates and people, <laughs> people like the, the style and the content. So, uh, I'm just kind of enjoying the ride right now. All right. All right. I, uh, that is actually very good because yeah, many content creators and many people have played EVE Online before. Um, me personally, I've always played EVE Online. Uh, so I, I don't see it with the same eyes that you do. So to mm -hmm. evolve this game into something even stronger, even better, I think you are the guy that actually could help out with like, you, you see the problem where we don't see the problem and we see problems that you don't even notice. So it's good mm -hmm. to have your side on this. I think this is, uh, this is very good. So you talked about you, uh, congratulations to your marriage. Is Thank that, you. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, you also talked about, uh, the Alliance. So what Alliance are you in? Uh, I am part of the silent Alliance, silent Alliance. And, uh, what corporation are you in? Uh, um, I am, I am a member of pandemic, um, We've got a number of, uh, I guess, sister corps or, you know, basically a bunch of corps under the, the pandemic umbrella. Um, but uh, we are all part of pandemic, which is the executor uh, corp of uh, the Silent Alliance. Right. And you hang in what area? Uh, we're up in Declan. We're up north. Declan. So you know about Pantheon, I guess. I do. I know about Pantheon. I've never been a part of it. Uh, never... Um, really fought against them. Um, we did have uh, a couple of uh, scepter fleets go down there and, and help them out with their their war. But uh, you know, by and large, we've been we've been dealing with the fireflies, and that's been our uh, big uh, villain for a while, if you will. Oh, fireflies! I need one of them here. I need <laughs> to make that happen. I I don't know any, but they're 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 fun opponents. They uh they will fleet up and they'll we lost a citadel to them um a couple of weeks ago, um or maybe about a week ago, whatever it was. Um so they're they're putting up a fight. It's been a lot of fun to uh to be going against them and having a worthy opponent on our doorstep. Oh yeah, of course. So if there is any fireflies listening to this, just like hit me up and uh, it would be nice to talk. So you've been with um, with that alliance since the beginning, then, or did you join recently? No, I've been I've been with uh, Silent pretty much uh, since the beginning. My the first corp I joined was uh, was absorbed by a smaller corp that was more indie focused, um, and they joined Silent uh, back probably in late August, early September of last year and uh then just from there i've kind of moved around a little bit within uh some of the different corps but by and large it's been um no not by and large it has been all within silent so uh, i've been flying with the same group of pilots and really enjoying it uh, for almost a year now that's great sounds amazing so when you started uh and you had no prior knowledge to eve online did you feel any any fear to join an alliance and go to Norsec? Not really. Um, I would say that the thing that got me to join a corp in the first place was that 500,000 skill points. <laughs> um, so that, that was, that was kind of a nice boost. Um, but you know, I've, I've been reading up and kind of following, uh, Eve online, um, for years and seeing some of the battles and kind of understanding how the politics work and things like that. And so when I saw that in our corp had the opportunity to, to look at some of this in a more, uh, I don't want to say traditional, but a more end game state, 
if you will, um, with the way that, you know, EVE Online is and, and the NullSec alliances and some of that. Um, I was really excited. Uh, so I wouldn't say I was scared or apprehensive at all. Um, NullSec was definitely a scary place at first, um, but a lot less scary than it is now because you didn't have bubbles and sovereignty and, you know, stuff like that. Um, but I mean, we, we ha had a great group of pilots, um, still do, um, you know, people have come and gone, but it's been, you know, a ton of fun and just being able to rely on some of them. If you get in a sticky situation, I think has, has helped with a lot of that fear and uncertainty that a lot of people probably feel when they go into NullSec for the first time. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cause I'm asking, cause, uh, maybe you didn't even know that much about it, but you had some prior knowledge. I, w I would like to talk to someone who don't know anything about EVE Online and going through the tutorial and joining a corp and then they realize that they have something called NullSec and subspace. Yeah, I mean, I would say that, I mean, again, I, I never played, I didn't know the mechanics, I didn't know anything like that. And so it was definitely a exciting opportunity to join Silent and to, to move everything. I still remember that first jump uh, into Nullsec um, because our, our little corp was, uh, I think we were based out of uh, Great Wildlands or that the area that was the low sec area that was right next to it. Um, and I had like worked and like mined and like done everything I needed to get a, get a Vexer. And that was like, oh my gosh, I just spent like a week and a half like trying to get this ship, right? And to 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 go into this this big unknown scary place where anybody can shoot you um it was definitely a little nerve-wracking but we we had like you know we probably had 20 or 30 pilots at the time and we all caravan down in our vexers and caracals and like you know just not even the not even the navy issues just the normal ones and just you know made our way out to nullsec with all of our stuff and it was just, it, I still remember that, that trek. It was, it was a lot of fun. And that camaraderie that we had, uh, was, was one of the highlights still of, uh, of the, this game for me. Yep. That is the best in Eve Echoes and Eve Online. So it's like you take pretty much 80% of everything you own and you, because you need a strong ship and <laughs> you go out mm -hmm. and be like, okay, I can lose everything. And back then we didn't <laughs> make that much money. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. A vexer was expensive. I know, I know, like eight million. I thought was like crazy high, and even earlier than that, I felt like for a Querser, I, I was gonna get like two million, and I was like, yeah. oh my god! It's, and every mission was what? three to five thousand. I was like, oh my yep. god, this is insane. So yeah, it's well, I yeah. I remember I was looking at buying one, and it was eighteen million isk. And I did the math and I was like, I, I will be better off. It will cost me 11 million to build this Vexer on my own. And so I skilled my, I skilled my main. I like, I, I took stuff out. I stopped training weapons and like started training mining and like all of this stuff. And then I finally was able to afford the Vexer. And then I realized, oh crap, I still have to train for like three weeks to get all the drone skills I need. <laughs> so it was... <laughs> it was just it was kind of comical my uh, again my, my wife was kind of laughing at me because she was like wait you've been working for how long to get this ship and you can't even fly it yet and i was like it's fine i'll figure it out you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay that is that is awesome you like stop training and building it yourself to save seven million uh that is very funny it, it's actually very yeah good. um but i i do understand it i had friends who who was um, into industry. So I like when you have this goal that is so far ahead that you cannot reach it. And and when, when you sit in a Vexor, I didn't fly a Vexor, I flew uh, an Omen and I wanted to fly okay. a, a Mahler, like a Mauler. And um, mm -hmm. I think the Mauler was, I might be wrong now, but like 60 million. Mm-hmm. Could it be that? Yeah, 64 million. And I, I just got into the Omen at like 8 million. <laughs> I was like, okay, now I need 64. <laughs> and yeah, oh, man. yeah, it was, I, I like it. I like when you push yourself, but yeah, and then you lose the ship. And 
You just, <laughs> you just have to do it again and again and again. Yep. So oh, I, I almost I almost quit when I lost that Vexer. I was so I was so mad. And then again, my my wife was just like, you're why are you so upset? And I was like, I lost this ship. And she goes, so you lost a ship in a video game and you've been in a bad mood for like two days. And I was like, all right, fair enough. <laughs> uh, OK, I, I would say a story. OK, um, this was. I I, th I don't think I've told this story, so it's it's nice to get it out there because it's a big part of my Eve Echoes. So I bought the rattlesnake quite early. I bought it for seven seven or eight billion, and this was before they raised the value to like fifteen. But still, seven billion. That was pretty much what I had. So I, I bought it, and I thought, okay, I do missions with it, uh, and I make two or three million uh, billion and then I just sell it you know for eight or seven it's fine you know so, something like that was my that was kind of what my brain told me and so I was doing some missions and I did a story mission there was one of them I don't remember um, pretty nasty one and there was a knock on my door okay so he was going to install the air conditioner and I was like yeah sure and he keep he kept asking me for help like holding and stuff so I was like, yeah, sure, I can do this AFK, <laughs> you know, and I kind of forgot the time. I, I heard the sound from from armor crashing. Oh, no. And I was like, oh, fuck, I'm, what am I doing? I was like, and I'm going to the phone and I'd be like, oh, shit. And there was so many <laughs> ships and I was scrambled by by one guy. And oh no! <laughs> normally you are scrambled by like the battleship, uh, like an elite battleship, and so you know my heart, and I started sweating like right then and there. And I was like, uh, "Can you hold on a second? And I just went like in the bathroom with my phone, and I just looked at it, and I saw I had like ten percent armor, and it just slowly went down. And I was like, "How am I? How am I supposed to do this?" So I target the 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 elite battleship and I started shooting and I was like this is not gonna work I'm not gonna do this is it's fucked oh. you know and I was like this is so bad and I felt so it's very hard to explain but like my whole world just crashed and I still have four kids and a wife and I was like this was like hell this was so bad and I was like okay I have to do something I have to fucking save this ship and I looked at it and I was like, who is scrambling me? And I saw that it was like a frigate that was scrambling me. I was like, oh, so there's a chance. So I was like locking that frigate, it took forever. <laughs> and I threw my drones at it. I changed it to small drones and I did everything. And I got away with like 30% hull. You know, and that, you know, so the feeling when you lose a ship that is like you have put everything in it, it's, it's real. <laughs> 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 so yeah, I didn't die, but I should have died. You know, that was so stupid. Talking about expensive ships. So how do you pay for your ships in the game? What do you do to make money? So I primarily rat um, and just do PV, uh, PVE and nullsec. Um, I also, with Pandemic, we have a pretty solid buyback program. And so uh, between the two of those, I will um, just get uh, planetary resources I drop those into our buyback program so I can uh, I can buy ships from our industry folks um, and then uh, again use that to, to go out and wrap more and and hopefully get more loot which has been a little bit challenging lately just because of the prices and the market and everything but uh, that's that's really the the short answer for how I do that all right cool um, mm -hmm. so what is your favorite ship uh, today it's probably the the RB2 Covops. Yeah, I love the Daredevil, um, but just with the the T10 interceptors coming out, I think uh, I think it's going to struggle a little bit more. But I, I I like those two. Those are my those are my go to uh, PvP in particular. Okay, cool. I have a cool question here. What is mm -hmm. the most random thing you have in your hangar? <laughs> the most random thing uh, I actually have. I think I still got it. Is a uh, Harmony small. What is it? It's a Harmony small hull repairer uh, that I picked up from something at the very beginning of the game. 
Uh, but it's been sitting in my hangar because nobody hold tanks. But it, if yeah, exactly right. But uh, but yeah, I I've got a hole repair, and I I don't know if I've ever seen one of those anywhere else. Yeah, I have one too. I'm not sure if it's called what you said, but I have a hole repair, and I don't know where I got it. But I'm also yeah, I'm also this hoarder in games. I I <laughs> collect stuff, so I will have to check yeah, that I, later. Yeah, I I I don't know where it came from, but it's uh it, it's kind of funny to I I showed somebody the other day, and um, you know, you you can't even find them on the market or anything like that. So I don't I don't know where it came from, but I I, I think it's pretty funny. It sure is, and I'm pretty sure that many people have um, reprocessed that one. Yeah, probably. It might be an Easter egg from Eve Online. I don't know. I have to look. I have to oh, look this it? up. Yeah, it might be. I don't know. I mean, yeah, hmm, maybe. I don't know because there, there is, uh, as you say, there is no small, medium, or large ones. So I mean, what are you gonna hold tank? Like, right. <laughs> but okay. Um, do you do PvP? Yes. yes, yes, love PvP. Are you? Uh, are you? Uh, would you call yourself a huge fighter, or are you? Uh, are you a solo fighter, or a gang fighter, or like a fleet battle guy? So I will take any fight I I can get. That being said, because of my schedule and the way that I just don't have time to, you know, unfortunately sit and go hunting solo a lot of times. Um, I, I'm right now doing a lot more, uh, small gang, like interceptor roams and big fleet battles, stuff like that. But, uh, I love the, the solo hunting and all of that stuff. I actually need to, I've got it on my to-do list to get a ship down to a uh, high sec and low sec to, uh, to try to scan some mission runners. But I haven't, uh, I haven't had a chance yet just cause I've been a little bit more limited than I'd like to be. Okay. So how do you think echoes run? I mean, I think there's always room for improvement, right? Um, this game is less than a year old, and I, for what it is, I think it's pretty awesome. You know, if we if we take a step back and you you try to find another game that is as dynamic and interactive as Echoes, I think you're going to be pretty hard pressed. Um, you know, a, a lot of the other games that I've played are the the base builder things where it's like, oh, wait 15 years to build another five infantry units or, you know, whatever. And, you know, just stuff like that. And, and for some people, that's awesome. And that's what they want. Um, but I come from loving the Starfighter games and, you know, like the Star Wars Rogue Squadron stuff and, you know, everything else. Um I actually, you know, have been playing Xbox games, you know, for probably 20 years at this point, you know, whenever the first Halo came out. <laughs> so those those types of, of action and, and interactive games and stuff like that are what I've always wanted on a mobile game. And I just haven't really found any that I really like or that have the depth and the, the dynamics that, that I wanted until I really started playing Echoes. And so there are definitely things that I wish weren't um, that the developers had done differently. Um, but overall, I mean, for me to be able to play a game like this on my phone or on my iPad, um, it, it is pretty awesome. Um, you know, if I had to nitpick, I would probably say I would, I would like the insurance system to be overhauled. Um, personally, I think you should just get your hole back. I don't think you should get any of the fittings or rigs or anything like that. Um, yeah, I mean, because because at the end of the day, you know, the, the Eve prides itself on being in a in a player driven economy, right? But if you don't if you don't have any scarcity, which is what's happening right now, then the economy is kind of shot. <laughs> so you know, I, I think it's I think it, it hurts the game to to give more than just the uh, more than just the whole back. But again, I think that's. That's kind of a, a minor uh, quibble, if you will, in the grand scheme of things. Um, I would love to see Destroyers uh, buffed. I think they've got a lot of really fun bonuses, and I love flying Destroyers. Um, but they're just so underpowered that it, it, unless you are, you know, you really know what you're doing and you are absolutely on point with the perfect storm of circumstances... You know, it's it's hard to kill anything bigger than a frigate. So, I think those would probably be my two. Um, 
actually, no, I take that back. The the one other thing that I would say is I would want I would want them to stop letting people above T6 use trainers. I think that would be my other my other thing. Well, just because think about it this way, right? So with a trainer, your insurance value is like two insurance points, right? That's what a hundred thousand isk, something like that. Yeah, you can fleet up, and with ten folks, you can go out and you can kill you know a billion dollar battleship, and there's no risk for you. So it's like, I get that we need to have them up to some point, but I would like to see them throttled back so that they're not abused. And even if somebody's starting to get into a stabber, you know, or something like that, that's at the same tech level, but just doesn't have the insurance point bonus, um, you know, you're still at that point, at least risking 40 or 50 million. So it, you know, I don't think it's a huge change, but I would like to see them take away some of that because right now, you know, again, it just, it feels like it's being abused, um, and taking away from some of that risk and reward that I think, uh, gives a lot of people the satisfaction of, of PVP in particular. I agree. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> that was very Yes. Clever. Another yes. one. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. We will, uh, we will push for that. No more trainers over T6. That, that's a good one, yeah. actually. I keep submitting it for the developer Q and A to see if they're going to do it, and uh, and they keep ignoring my question. So uh, I'm just going to keep doing it, and hopefully, eventually, they'll uh, they'll they'll give me something. Yeah. Well, um, I'm talking to Joseph now and then, and uh, like I'm telling him, uh, if if this podcast is going good and we get so many views, you better listen to it. <laughs> you better <laughs> you better do what we say. So okay, I'll I'll, um, I'll happily yeah. help out again. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Very nice. Okay, so um, can you remember the best fight you've been part of or the best memory? And uh, unless it was the first time you jumped in with your Vexor. <laughs> um, no, I've, I've had some highlights since then. Um, I, I think that the, the best fight um, just overall would probably be some of the, the big fleet battles that we've had uh, in silent. Um, I remember, uh, even though we lost the Citadel, uh, the first time in RG nine, uh, it was the, the first, uh, the first POS that was actually ever dropped in Eve echoes, um, was, uh, was come at, uh, come at me, bro, or something like that. Um, and we ended up, you know, it was like 800 to like 200 or something like that. And we were just hopelessly outnumbered, but you know, just the sense of scale and the holy crap, you know, brown pants moment of seeing all of those reds come on fleet. And then with our FCs and just everything um, working as a team, um, still being able to, to take out, you know, quite a few enemy ships. I, d I don't remember if the, um, if we ended up coming out is positive or anything like that, but it was just, it was such a cool, fun, um, you know, a fun encounter, I guess, or a fun experience uh, to be again playing on a mobile game. I think it was was just a lot of fun, and it's something that uh, you know I'm I'm not going to say that I, I haven't had others that are other memories or other fights that are are just as uh, incredible, but that was probably one of the ones that uh, just sticks out because it was kind of one of the first and one of the biggest that I've been a part of. Yes, yeah, sounds very nice. Really, I have one last question, and that is like. What is your vision of Eve in the future? Pretty much general. Like, how do you? How would you like the game to be in the future? Would like do you do you want the game to be five years old, or do you want it to be ten years old, or do you want to have major differences? Do you want titans in the game? Do you want like? Do you want this major gotcha. um, alliances that we have today to split up and 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 be more internal fights or pretty much anything. I think that my vision of Eve is probably a little bit different than a lot of people because I didn't play Eve online. And I say that as a preference uh, here because I, for one, I don't enjoy the discord drama. Um, you know, I know a lot of people and a lot of, um, you know, you mentioned like big alliances splitting and faction, uh, faction warfare within stuff like that. And, you know, I personally don't 
really like to see that sort of thing because a lot of times it just comes with a lot of toxicity and uh, general nastiness. And I, I just, I don't like that. You know, I, I, I would like for us to be decent human beings to one another. And uh, unfortunately, um, in the limited time I've been playing, you know, when you start having some of those, those internal issues, it, it just, it's not a, it's not a good environment. It's not one that I particularly want to be spending a lot of time in. Um, so with that being said, you know, I would, I would really like to see, and I actually made a video about this. Um, I would actually like to see the developers shrink the map a good bit. Um, because right now it just doesn't feel like we quite have the player base to, really fill out the full map that they've given us. And we've seen issues with big fights and servers not being able to handle them and lag and stuff like that anyways. And so it it feels to me like the developers need to make some tough choices about getting people to, I guess, focus on actual enemies rather than like internal enemies. Um, you know, so that you, you do have people working together in these big alliances and all of that. Um, and from a technology perspective, having less empty systems that you have to support gives you more resources for those big fights, you know, to be a little bit more elastic. So I, I'd really like to see that, um, until the player base really grows a lot more, um, because I don't think anybody really enjoys just autopiloting through empty space. Um, that being said, obviously that does go along with some of the new content and you mentioned Titans and I know dreads and, and things like that. Um, I, I don't come from Evo, so I don't know what is out there. So it's all kind of cool to me, <laughs> you know, to, uh, to see these new ships or, um, you know, I I'd love to see some more faction ships. I'm really excited about the sisters of Eve and, uh, uh, some of the other stuff that they have coming out in, um, uh, in August. But, you know, in terms of a vision, in terms of what I'd like to see, I would like to see the game succeed. I think it's a fantastic, uh, fantastic game um, being on mobile. Like I said earlier, just the technology that, that we can have in our pocket now and be able to game wherever uh, is, is fantastic. Uh, sometimes to my wife's, uh, <laughs> my wife's frustration uh, that I can play anywhere. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's, it's just... I'd love to see. I'd love to see the game succeed. I'd love to see it uh, be a five, ten year thing, um, you know, kind of like what we've gotten with uh, with Eve Online. Um, I think there are definitely changes that need to be made, and you know, like I said, I think um, potentially shrinking the map or finding another way to expand the player base um, would be one that uh, comes to mind. I don't know if that's just more advertising dollars or whatever, because I, I don't know if I've ever seen an, an ad for Eve online or I'm sorry for, uh, for Eve echoes. Um, whereas I've seen stuff for like infinite Lagrange and, you know, raid shadow legends and all these other ones. Um, and so I don't know if that's just, I'm not being targeted because I already play or, or what, but I'd love to see, um, you know, just more players in general, um, you know, filling up some of the, the empty space on the map, getting people out into uh, into space uh, so that there's more content organically generated. And we're not just, you know, we're not just waiting on the devs to, to push the next uh, the next update for content. So that's kind of a long winded answer. But that's that's probably, you know, in my ideal ideal world, um, I just want more people playing. So I have more people to shoot at. That is an amazing answer. So, yes, yeah, space is great, <laughs> and more people should be in space. Uh, we talked a little bit earlier about uh, the, the player-driven economy that EVE has, and I was going to say that there is another game that's, that's called Albion Online, um, mm -hmm. but there's no spaceships there, so it's, kinda, <laughs> it's not <laughs> well, and that I, cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm all for, you know fantasy or you know spaceships i actually i write uh i write novels um so i've written a couple of like uh fantasy historical fantasy i'm actually working on something that's inspired by uh eve echoes that's like a space you know kind of opera thing so i love all of that stuff i am absolutely down for it and like i said i mean eve echoes i think has just been the best mobile game that i've found so far that you know, gives me all of the, the fun shooty poo poo stuff that I want. Yep. It's definitely one of the few 
MOBA games that is close to the new era of new games. So yep, um, absolutely. This has been amazing. I uh, I'm very happy that you joined me. Yeah, man. Thanks so much for having me. This was fun. Um, you know, I think that these types of conversations and just giving more exposure and more content out for for everybody is always a good thing. So thanks so much for putting this together and having me on. No problem. Okay, I will let you to your meeting and uh, I hope you have a great time in Eve Echoes. Thanks, man. So uh, good talking to you and we'll uh, we'll catch up soon. Yeah, we do. Bye. Now, if you want me to do an interview with someone else, I don't have long enough arms to reach through all the space, so I cannot find everyone out there. If you know someone that would be interesting to listen to, then contact me and I will do my best. And don't forget to caress that subscribe button for me. Bye. Hmm.